uh, who is joining uh, this uh, video series. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Uh, I can see that there are some of you who have been with us for a long time, uh, you know, since we started having these uh, door conversations. And so I want to say thank you. Uh, this is a video series that explores uh, for couples and for families, uh, you know, their journey. And one of the things that we say is that every couple or every family goes through challenges. Let no one cheat you, but we all go through challenges. And that is what we have been exploring in our video uh, series. Hi, my name is uh, Carol Wanjao. I'm a pastor and a marriage and family therapist. I'm so excited that you can be with us today. Uh, today, uh, we, I have a friend of mine that I'm so excited uh, to be introducing. A couple of weeks ago, we had a conversation with a couple and we, you know, realized that um, one of their challenges that they were going through uh, was mental health uh, issue in their marriage. And that kind of generated a lot of interest. And so, uh, in, you know, these subsequent videos, I thought, you know, maybe it might be a good idea to just call in a specialist who would be able, you know, to kind of help us understand what is, what is mental, what is mental health, what is mental illness. And so I'm so excited that I do have my good friend, uh, Carol, uh, who will be uh, with us tonight, just sharing on mental illness. So Karibu Sana, Carol, uh, maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit more than I have. You can tell us what you do, your profession, and so on. Thank you, Pastor Carol, for having me, and uh, good evening to all those that are listening to us tonight. Um, my name, as Carol has said, is uh, Carol, just like her, it sounds like a tongue twister, <laughs> Carol Raria. I am a trained psychologist. My training is both in counseling psychology and uh, clinical psychology. I practice full-time in what you call intervention. That means I do therapy uh, from the start of my week to the end. That is what I have purpose to concentrate on. I run a private clinic where I work from. And uh, as much as my training has been holistic, it has given me the skills to work with all populations. My preference has been the adult population that is 18 years and above. Um, I happen to have a big clientele that is couple, couples, uh, so I do a lot of couple therapy. I have a very keen interest and passion on mental conditions, and I'm grateful for the training that I've been given that has equipped me to do assessments and to be able to offer interventions that help. So okay. that is who I am. That is yes. who you are. Thank you so much. <laughs> I know we had been talking and we were saying, oh my goodness, in these COVID times, uh, you, you've had to change. I mean, now you're doing more Zoom, you're doing counseling on Zoom, which is uh, very, very interesting uh, <laughs> that all of us are having to adopt uh, to this COVID situation. Uh, and we were also talking and saying that uh, this COVID situation has also un uh, uh, revealed or unveiled uh, now, you know, things that are happening uh, in families. And um, it seems like uh, in, in, in this season of uh, crisis that um, whatever it is that was happening in the family has, uh, if there was any crisis in the family, then, you know, with the curfew, you know, with people losing jobs and so on, then it has increased, you know, the, the, the levels of crisis, the anxiety, you know, have, have increased. And, and so, you know, that has also been something that, you know, we've been tackling uh, in this video series. So as I mentioned, yeah, the previous week we, t we came across a mental illness. And um, so, you know, I'm so glad that you can talk to us extensively about it as a clinical psychologist. So maybe we can begin with a definition. What is your definition uh, of mental illness? A very good question. And let me say, the title I use is actually more of the uh, counseling psychology. The clinical will come when I graduate in a program that I am in. Mm -hmm. It is important okay. to say that for integrity purposes, all right? Okay. okay. And, uh, I'm glad that you're, you're asking this because this is a very pertinent issue, Pastor Carol. In our work, we say there is no health without mental health. So if anyone is pursuing physical health and you forget your mental health, you will never achieve health because there's no health without mental health. Before I even give the definition of mental health, 
Let me give the definition of health because that is where we borrow the mental health from first. Yeah. And mental health, according to the World Health Organization, which is really the body that gives us definitions on health issues and the ICD, is it's not merely the absence of disease, all right? Yeah. It is a state of complete well being physically, mentally, socially, psychologically, and even spiritually, all right? Wow. Yeah, so it's a wider. When we're talking about health, it encompasses quite a lot. It's not just, you know, physical, it's, you know, uh, social, psychological, and so on. Okay, fantastic. Uh -huh. yes. And if anybody pays attention to any part of those areas, components of health and neglects the other, then yeah. you actually just find us still unhealthy. Yeah. All right. So then what is mental health? Mental health is a state of well-being whereby individuals recognize and realize their abilities. Mm -hmm. They are able to cope with normal stress. They are able to work productively and fruitfully to impact not only their lives and their families' lives, but also to, to impact the society and the community that they live in. All wow. right? Yeah. Yes. Really, really holy. It's all about that. Is where we say when you have a mental health condition or you have a mental illness, then mm. it's likely to impact your relationship with yourself, what you call intrapersonal relationship. Mm. You start seeing yourself as a lower being, not good enough, you know, doubting your worthiness to live. It also impacts your ability to cope with other people. It impacts your ability to work if you're employed. It impacts your ability to be a good student if you're in school. It impacts your ability to take care of your family if you're a caregiver. Without mental health, it is difficult to fulfill this responsibility. All those functions. Oh, wow. And we must pay attention to. Okay, fantastic. Thank you for that. And, and thank you for explaining it in, in its holisticness that um, if you are experiencing a mental health uh, condition or an issue, then, then it's going to affect, you know, your work, your ability to parent, your marriage, it affects even, you know, your ability to take care of yourself, it affects quite, quite a lot. So, so thank you for that. So, okay, so, um, so then we would say that illness, um, uh, you've, you've defined mental wellness what would you say then of illness okay very good yeah. <laughs> so it means then if you are a person who is not able to recognize your abilities yeah you're not able to realize what you can do and do, cannot do you're not able to realize who you truly are you're not able to cope with the day today's stresses of life you're not able to bounce back from adversity you know, and adversity can be many things loss of job a broken relationship grief when you lose loved ones you're not able to be productive and to be fruitful and contribute to the well-being of the community that you're in even as a child then you are incapacitated and there's a dysfunction oh wow when you give this definition, it means we are all in trouble. <laughs> you know, when because you know you're talking about your your uh, you know your ability to even just tell okay these are my abilities you know kind of define yourself um, how how well you bounce back after an adversity you know how well you do with grief and whether you're contributing to the well being of the society oh my goodness you know <laughs> my goodness okay. So uh, let me just ask, which is the most common mental illness um, you know, that you come across in your practice? Um, maybe before we talk about the most common, you do want us to talk about the most common or do we look at how we even get to know how the presentation is like? Okay. What do go ahead. Yeah, yeah go ahead. All right. So that when we are saying the most common, there can be a, perhaps a good background yeah. for people to be able to understand where this is coming from. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, the prevalence for mental illnesses in uh, Africa and in Kenya, which is in Africa in general, mm. is not very accurate. All right. 
it's not as very, very accurate. And there are reasons why which I can discuss. One is that generally in Kenya, let me talk of Kenya in particular, because this is the context that we are in, a lot of us do not live in plenty. Mm. Okay. I yeah. think they say majority live below a dollar per day. So it means a lot of us live in need. And if we live in need, then it means we have very many competing needs. Yeah. When I am unwell, do I see a doctor? Or do I use that time based shillings to buy Skuma Wiki and Unga to feed my family? Or do I pay rent or do I pay school fees for my children? Yeah. So, generally, yeah. with the competing needs, our, our health seeking behavior, what we call health seeking behavior, is when you're not feeling stable, do you go and see a doctor? Is not there. It's very poor. Even for those who have a medical cover, the medical covers are very limited. You exhaust them very fast. Yeah, so usually true. what will happen, people will wait to go to the doctor when you have a physical condition because a physical condition is very uncomfortable. I have fever, I have body aches, I'm diarrhea, I have a headache that is not going away. And that is what I will present to a doctor. But even that, many people don't go. We are a community that is very good at self-treatment over the counter drugs. We fix things, isn't it? Well, we feed, we boil our leaves, we buy many concussions, and somehow you're able to move on with life. So because we, 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 we are not seeking help, we are self-treating, or we go to the hospital with a physical, physical condition, uh, chances of a mental condition being missed out in the diagnosis are very, very high. Yeah. Best practice globally in terms of healthcare is that anybody who presents themselves to a clinical setup needs to be screened for a mental, for mental. condition. Yeah. And the screening is very basic. It's a two minute thing. We use things like the patient health questionnaire that gives you an indicator that the presentation here, even if it's physical, is actually more than just physical. Yeah. But again, and I think our, our listeners this evening could tell us if any of us has yeah. been to a center presenting with a physical condition in the worst screen yeah for, for the mental uh, it doesn't Probably happen <laughs> it never happens yeah no, we have the numbers because that screening is not done yeah when people die whether due to homicide or suicide or uh, drug uh, alcohol abuse mm -hmm. alcoholism the cause of death may not be registered as a mental condition what to be registered, perhaps the recent we cover it. It's yeah. not, many cases are not reported. Omicide is the most covered because we want to protect the family member. Uh, alcoholism, maybe the cause of death will be registered as organ failure. So again, mm -hmm. the numbers, the statistics won't show us yeah. how many actually have a mental health condition, all right? Then when we look at uh, our research, it's not robust in Africa and this is because we have a deficit in the budgets for yeah. mental health. Yeah. I was surprised to Carol and tell you that the mental health budget in Kenya is 0.5 percent of the health budget, not the national budget, the health of budget. the health budget. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's a very neglected area. So when we talk of prevalence, we can only make estimates which could be more or less. Yeah. And normally in Kenya, we say one out of every four people yeah. is either living with a mental condition or yeah. will develop one in the yeah. course of their life. In their life one, right? one out of four. Okay. One out of four. Yeah. So I can now answer, respond to when you ask which one is the most prevalent. Oh, yeah. yeah. Out of all this now, based on this. Uh, um, numbers that I've given or this explanation I've given you yeah. and I would say it would be depression. Let me put okay. it that way. But okay. before I go to depression, I would also say uh, because mental illness has uh, varying onset times, it will depend on which category you're asking what the prevalence is. Yeah, yeah. Get it? Yeah. So if we are talking of early childhood, the onsets that are from early childhood, which yeah. means from birth to the childhood years, yeah. perhaps the most common in Kenya would be the autism spectrum disorders. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When it comes 
to adolescents and adults, yeah. it would be depression. Depression. When it comes to the older population, yeah. it would be mass disease, which is a form of dementia. Okay. So for those coming for therapy, then it would be depression. It is depression. Clinical terms, major depressive disorder. Yeah. Okay. It is actually rated as one of the highest causes of a global burden, yeah. uh, one of the highest causes of disability in yeah. the world. Yeah. We talk of disability, we, we are talking of inability to function effectively yeah. and contribute to the well being of the nation or community that you live in. Okay, okay. So, so, okay. So, uh, so, so you have said that depression, which is very interesting. Um, you know, I hadn't thought that uh, it would be depression, <laughs> and maybe it's because it is very, you know, it, it it's not obvious. You know, uh, people may have it, and um, they might not even be aware that they're having depression. So maybe you can tell us um, what are the symptoms? What are the symptoms of depression? And um, as you do that, um, I think it's always helpful for people to hear it uh, in, in a case that you, you, know, you may have handled, that this is the way that it presented itself. So depression is actually classified as a mood disorder. So one of the key areas that it will affect is how a person experiences themselves in ones and how they're experienced by other people mm -hmm. all right yeah so three key things that must be there for a depressive disorder diagnosis yeah is extreme sadness you're preoccupied yeah. with feeling of you know sadness if people cry and they don't know why they're shedding they're a tear yeah all right and feelings of unworthiness yeah okay yeah. Uh, why am I here? Who am I adding value to? The world would be better off without. So there's a tendency to evaluate, evaluate yourself in a very low way, yeah. such that if I have depression and I'm even a CEO of a company, I can begin to feel like that position is not for me. I'm not good enough. I'm not yeah. meeting. I yeah. shouldn't be here, isn't it? Yeah. Then the third component for a depressive diagnosis is lack of in things that you used to enjoy before yeah this could be maybe i loved working out i no longer want to do that i'm involved in ministry i no longer want to do that i love my children and my family and i love cooking for them and taking care of them but i no longer want to do that yeah. i love my house tidy and neat it, it doesn't matter anymore whether the curtains stay drawn the whole day or not yeah i Clean, clean, it's okay. I don't bath for days. Wow. Let me give a caution. Those are the three. I'll highlight the others. There are people who can have highly functional depressive disorder. So they are depressed yeah. and may not manifest outwardly any of those things. They, yeah. will be they may not talk of the unworthiness, but it is there. It will take maybe a clinician to actually pick it out. Pick it right? out, yeah. 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 So for a, a depressive diagnosis, those three needs to be there, but mm. there are other things that are ought to be checked for also. Changes in sleep pattern. Yeah. Am I sleeping too much or am I sleeping too little? Yeah. We all ought to have a regular schedule of how many hours we sleep yeah. so that when they change in that and it's a change that cannot be explained anything, yeah. Yeah. so somewhere. Another symptom would be changes in uh, appetite. So it means you're either eating too much or you're eating too little. Some yeah. people also comfort eating. Comfort yeah. eating is when you eat <laughs> junk huh? yes. <laughs> in yeah. your body. And yeah. when there's changes in your appetite, then that automatically comes with changes in yeah. because if you're eating too much, you're to Gain weight. If you're yeah. eating too little, you're going to lose weight and you're gaining weight without any good explanation. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Another symptom of depression is uh, a term we call psychomotagitational experiences. You become either too restless, yeah. you know, you're up and about, you cannot be content or you want to do absolutely nothing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Then so, another uh -huh. 
sorry, another symptom is extreme fatigue for no explainable reason. You sleep, you wake up, you're tired. Mm. Morning, you're tired. Lunchtime, you're tired. Evening, mm. you're tired. Tiredness becomes your fatigue becomes your middle name mm. and you can't describe what is happening, what is causing you to feel that tired. Mm. Then there's lost concentration and attention. So if mm. you're a student, you realize you want to miss classes, you realize you don't want to do your assignments. If you are a pastor, you don't want to prepare your sermons, you know. Yes, you yeah. Yeah. If you are uh, an office person, you're lagging behind with deadlines, you don't want yeah. to do that. Yeah. But this is a question for some people who are alcoholic, they become excessive. They yeah. will work tirelessly yeah. without taking a break at all because yeah. it's yeah. a for them all right yeah then some when it's very extreme it can come with the central ideations yeah or yeah and yeah. Them. yeah yeah and then there's extreme irritability anything can provoke you any small thing yeah some things used to provoke you before we we'll really get and you can imagine a mother who is depressed and doesn't know and is shouting at the children's center right and left yeah. shouting at that house can be inhabitable. It can right? be, yeah. Inhabitable. It is important also to note that, Carol, when it comes to the prevalence of depression, women are two times more likely to suffer a depressive disorder yeah. than men. Okay. How, how is that? How is that? I will explain. Yeah. One, something we call the burden of care. Yeah. The burden of care is for many of us, especially adult women. Let me give a of a woman who probably is married, has young children, has elderly parents, and is working. All these things call for a, a need of attention, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. And you, you can be stressed. In our setup, back here, we are able to afford external help, but you can imagine in a setup, especially like what this lockdown has reviewed, where perhaps people don't have ourselves or to assist how much you have to jump keep the housing on that take care of your uh take care of perhaps even parents especially those who have parents those caught up in the sandwich generation yeah. it can be very consuming but another component that contributes to higher rates of depression among women is our hormonal hormones okay yeah. the cycle go through the yeah. cycles of menstrual uh, you know people who go into almost like a depressive state in the one week that they're having their menses then there's what you call the postpartum depression what men will never experience yeah. <laughs> they don't give birth no they don't give yeah. birth <laughs> yeah. menopause and pre premenopause all those are hormones and that's another thing that people are like are, are very at high risk of yeah. depression. understand why they suffer more yet we are more expressive in terms of our difficulties yeah. that god what that way because maybe it would be five times yeah okay but so so then yeah. okay so then with depression uh, so how does it um uh, so you know there's this couple they are married and um so how does it manifest itself in, in a marriage situation? What are, so I know you have described some symptoms uh, generally of um, uh, the depressed, uh, someone who's undergoing depression, but in marriage specifically, what are there any unique things there that, you know, uh, symptoms that manifest themselves? Oh, yes, yeah, yes. In, in couples, it will manifest very uniquely because these are two adult people put together. Yeah very intimately isn't it yeah so let's take maybe a case of a, a depressive onset in a man what yeah. are the changes that may begin to happen in this man which the wife may not even know are indicators of depression all right yeah. Yeah. one can be isolation they do not want to join in when you have when you have a family function they would rather be away and yeah. it's very easy Feel like you're not being supported you feel like maybe let's say if i'm hosting my sisters and my parents and my husband doesn't want to be there i would treat that as depression i'm likely to think he just yeah. doesn't like my family is yeah. avoiding get it yeah. uh, another manifestation can be sex in men 
Holic or Jim Holic. So they are the, the absence from home is increased. Yeah. They are not home regularly. And it's no wonder set up when a man is not at home, is either spending a lot of time with the boys or spending a lot of time in the bar. If you do not have an understanding, let's sit and talk and see what exactly is happening. We have people rush quickly. Their mental, their, their way of thinking, rush to thinking. The it must be interested in somebody else yeah. because it almost feels like the rationale of the human mind it yeah. is to look for explanations where and if your explanation explanations run to the wrong things you'll only be worsening the condition this guy stayed in the office to is not productive but he could be in that office trying to make up for lost time in the day to maintain his job yeah. he went out to the boys perhaps because to be aware where there's no demand on him, that is what his brain is telling him. And you, if you don't know, that can be a manifestation of something bigger. I'm not saying everybody who stays out is depressed, uh, but if you don't know and you don't, you don't talk without bringing other possible causes into the relationship, is the point. Also, in men, they can increase their hardcore intake. So you mm -hmm. find. Somebody used to be maybe a social drinker, just maybe wine or a clue, or never even, even used to drink at all. May begin to drink. Drinking is horrible because alcohol by itself is a depressant. Yeah. That means when you take it, the part of the brain, the pathways in the brain that it affects, depress you. So even it can be worsen, yes. Oh, wow. Okay tends to worsen the condition so that if you had an onset of depression, you may actually then sink more yeah. into it, yeah. right? Then yeah. another symptom would be that when depression comes in, the sense of responsibility may decline. Yeah. So you find somebody is not paying bills, you know, they are not responsible, they are not uh, accounting for their whatever, whether it's money or responsibilities they're supposed to take in their household. And if they are not able to come out clean and say what is happening, because sometimes they also do not know, it's going to cause a fight between them and their spouse. No spouse wants to know rent is not paid when your landlord has called you. Mm, that's Especially true. if you don't like that, because one of them, <laughs> Special needs of a woman is a sense of security yes. and safety, mm -hmm. isn't it? So if mm -hmm. that is being reflected that we can be auctioned, this person is likely to react, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then for some, intimacy, uh, lowered libido, they just don't want to be intimated. Again, if you don't know that can happen, where do you run to? If there must be somebody else in this person's life, all right? Wow, wow. Women, women, it could be negligence of household chores. You don't care what is done, what is eaten, what is taken care of, how the children are doing. It's sorry, let me be, let me rephrase that. It's not you don't care. You care, but you don't have the ability energy. Mm -hmm. the energy to pay mm -hmm. attention, isn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. To that. So it will appear like you're lazy, you're careless, you're clumsy. A lot of women have been taken to their in-laws when they are being and they've been taken there as irresponsible people who need further training. It's not further training they require. They require help. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Women also go into alcoholism, by the way. And a lot of the women who drift into alcoholism when there's a, a depressive onset do it secretly and at home. Okay? And studies show us you're more likely to drink more when you're drinking alone and secretly because there's nobody who holds you accountable. Yeah. So with therapy, we meet women who have, you know, storage in the ceiling or a cabinet hidden somewhere. And nowadays you don't need to step out of the comfort of your home. You can do a delivery. Oh, yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a home delivery now. <laughs> Not here, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And because of the unworthiness, it's not unusual to find people even quitting jobs before yeah. even they are laid off. You just wake up and make a very rational decision and you leave, yeah. which can 
long-term effects. The irritability and uh, the sadness will make you a very difficult person to be around. So it's likely to accelerate isolation when everybody's avoiding you. But mm. now, unfortunately, like for mothers, what happens is that even when you're irritable, children become clingy because ch children are very perceptive. They can wow. tell the primary caregiver is not okay. So here you are seeking to be left alone, but your child is just clinging on to you because they can sense yeah. the something wrong with mommy. You know, yeah. it can be so damaging because when you keep chasing them away and keep shouting at them, you're really destabilizing their foundation of security, yet you're not aware. But mm. there's also lots of libido. Yeah. Decrease and without intimacy in relationship, you, 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 you know better, Caro, what happens. Yeah. yeah. Are very, very, very meaningful, right? Yeah. So, what this couple realizes there's something deeper. Their communication is broken. Their conflict resolution is broken. Blame games are up, you know, very up. You've invited parties into the relationship that ought not to have come in. Wow. And very complicated because yeah. sometimes we actually stay in a problem to prove to the external parties we brought into the problem how valid the problem is yeah yeah <laughs> get me yeah and yeah. how it becomes more difficult yes oh my goodness um carol as you're talking i'm just thinking there are so many marriages that um a lot of uh, and yeah a lot of marriages do present you know with what you have just described I, i'm so sure as as people are listening they can say you know what i i know that yes i you know these are the issues that are going on in their in, in our marriage so the question is is there hope you know is there hope uh when there is a, a spouse uh who is depressed you know what you know you what would you advise as the next steps you know for somebody who is listening and they're saying, you know, oh my goodness, I recognize that for me, for myself. I recognize, you know, you've mentioned quite a number of things. I recognize those symptoms. What, what would you advise as the next steps? Wonderful. Carol, before everybody does a self-diagnosis and labels themselves as sick, depressed. <laughs> depressed, let me make a very important point, which I ought to have mentioned, that these symptoms that we talked about are not a one time. They are not, they've not happened just one day, because each of us, if we are to be very honest, we experience these things from time to time. Yeah. It is labeled as depression when it has been ongoing for a period of at least two weeks. Okay. Consistently, all right? For a period of at least two weeks. But if it's Monday, you woke up with all these things and by Tuesday you're fine, that's okay. All yeah. right? So yeah. yes, everybody says, I am so depressed <laughs> right now. <laughs> because of the issues that I am depressed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, there is a lot of hope. This is the beautiful thing. Uh, depression is the most prevalent mental condition, but depression is a condition that has very good prognosis. I know I'm using a technical term. When you talk of prognosis, it means that when it's diagnosed right and proper treatment is given, chances of recovery are very high. And yeah. it's not every treatment that will require medication. It depends on how severe the symptoms are and what it is that cost them. What is it that has cost you to get into this depressive state? So is there hope? There's a lot of hope. And what I would encourage couples in particular, if we were to, to address couples today, is when these things happen, I really wish couples would turn towards each other instead of away from each other because mm. when it, you're turning towards each other mm. a solution can be found mm. what do i mean by turning away from each other turning away means one person hides in their friends or they hide in their work they hide in the gym or chama or whatever or get into other affairs extramarital mm. relationships to yeah. seek so when you yeah. do that you introduce variables into the relationship that were not the primary problem. And before you know it, you do not even know which demon you're fighting. 
Yeah. Are we dealing with this psychological mental condition that can be resolved? Or have we now introduced affairs, maybe even an illness, maybe misuse of money, economic challenges, because we often to cope away from each other. So my encouragement in finding hope is turn towards each other. When you turn towards each other, you're able to have difficult conversations without criticism, without attacking, without defensiveness. And it's at that point people agree. Could we seek help together? And this help doesn't even have to be the mental health specialist to begin with. It could be speak with your couple, an outsender who listens objectively and says, what I am hearing as the pertinent issues here is one, two, three, and they yeah. can be addressed. Okay. It could be sitting with your pastor if you belong to your faith or religious community you belong to. It could be talking a trusted, confident, a good friend who has good influence in you. When we are speaking about things to do with our marriage, you don't pick just anybody. You need to pick somebody who fights for your marriage. Yeah. Somebody you know means well. And just share, this is what is happening. And as they listen, they'll be able to give you pointers. In fact, more often than not, when we turn towards each other and invite an objective party, they are likely to play back to you that they had observed the same things. Because we yeah. do not live in isolation, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And when I come to you with Anthony and as we are speaking, you realize, you know what, in this forum we work together, I actually noticed ABCD about you. And that feedback is very helpful because we begin to realize that we are not the only ones experiencing it. Other people are also experiencing it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And if you can turn towards each other, I don't know how to emphasize this, solutions are possible because what happens, and this is what you like to say, Pastor Carol, you start treating each other as allies, yeah. not adverse. You're yeah. not enemies, mm. but you're fighting an enemy that has come into the relationship. Thereafter, once you've talked and you've been highlighted to the difficulties, that are there and you maybe highlighting the difficulties that are present, it is always advisable. I want to really encourage people to make friends with counsel, with counseling. Yeah. Where well, you sit with somebody, especially who is even able to, to tell you the severity of, the, of this condition, and it doesn't have to be prolonged. But what happens is that when you seek counsel with an expert in mental health, you'll be able to get better long-term management that is likely to curb the damage that the condition, if left undiagnosed and untreated, can cause. Because we know if depression is left undiagnosed and untreated, it can lead to divorce, it can lead to separation, but it can also lead to failure in playing your roles, especially the parental role of raising a generation that is responsible and we'd also grow up to contribute to the society that they are living in. Okay. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Carol, for, for just talking to us about um, uh, depression in marriage, uh, depression generally, and uh, in marriage uh, specifically, and uh, also just, uh, you know, just speaking to us hope. I mean, it's so interesting when you say that um, couples, when they, you know, find themselves undergoing what you have been describing, that they should uh, turn to each other as opposed to turning outside of each other. And uh, I love the fact that you do mention that uh, even talking to a friend, a trusted friend, a friend who has good counsel, not just a trusted friend, but a friend who has good counsel, uh, that they are actually able to help somebody uh, move along somewhat and that um, you know uh, after that or you know in, in, then if someone feels that they need to go see a counselor then they can do that so thank you so much for those uh, steps I think they are they're very helpful when you had first of all mentioned all the symptoms are like oh my goodness oh my goodness this is an avalanche of people just saying we're depressed and we we need help <laughs> but the first place uh, people can go to is friends you know they can go to friends um and uh, and you did mention they can also go to pastors and, and pastors are available to do that so uh, allow me to really emphasize about the church the pastors or any spiritual center that is show that that is where people run to for help first more often than not so i think that your work and the work of what is not easy at all 
And it would be nice when uh, churches or, or institutions, religious institutions, spiritual institutions, have all the resources necessary to be able to help this person holistically so that they do not take just a spiritual approach yeah. to their presentation. Because it is proven worldwide that that is one of the places people run to. And because of what, if I, let me, because I'm a Christian, let me talk about the church. Because of what the church represents, the church represents hope, it represents unconditional acceptance, it represents healing. And in the midst of my confusion, I don't think I want to be in any other place, but yeah. a place where I get hope, where I get restoration, where I get an unconditional acceptance, where I get healing. Yeah. When the church doesn't offer that, we hold people. And I'm saying we because I am the church as well. Yeah. We hold people because they run there when they're very vulnerable, but yeah. they leave destroyed. So there is need to be well equipped, even if not have the full knowledge, at least have the ability to uh, refer accordingly. Where yeah. can you and seek this kind of holistic healing? It's very pertinent. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'll, I'll want us to pray in a short moment, but I'd like to say, and thank you so much, Carol, just for even that perspective of, you know, the, the place of the church. And I'd like to say that uh, for anyone who is listening, you know, to this uh, conversation, and um, you're not part of a church, or you're not, <laughs> you're not part of a church, you're not a part of Mavuno, there's actually a a, a, a link below that you can click uh, to join the WhatsApp community. Uh, at Mavuno, we, we do have uh, marriage programs uh, that are run, that, you know, that help. Uh, you, you may be married and you've never done uh, any marriage preparatory class or course or whatever, and we do have that in Mavuno. And so if you're interested in that, uh, click on the link, uh, indicate that, you know, you're interested in DOA, which is what it's called, uh, and uh, we will get back to you uh, so that uh, we can get you onto the way of, of healing. Uh, I'd also like, um, uh, in, in this video series, we've been going through this book as well. It's called The Negativity Fast. And uh, one of the things that Carol said, uh, you know, about um, uh, uh, depression is that somebody feels very low or they, they feel very badly about themselves. And uh, there's a very interesting thought uh, that comes from this book, The Negativity Fast. Again, if you're interested in uh, information about this book, you can indicate there on the WhatsApp community and we're going to uh, get you information on how you can uh, uh, buy the book. It's actually available on PDF, so it's, it's quite easy to get the book. Book. And uh, the thought today is that it says, my life is not special. I'm not that important. I don't matter. Uh, that's the reflection for today. And, 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 and you know, as, as, as Carol was saying, I mean, this is dangerous. This is, uh, this is completely against, uh, um, uh, it, it's not helpful. <laughs> it's not a helpful way. Uh, but uh, let me just say the reality is that, um, that you are special, uh, that you do matter, that your life does matter. Uh, and no matter what that, no matter what you're going through or no matter what you have gone through, your life does matter. And uh, what, the, what the book says here is that, um, understand that God loves you. Understand that God loves you. Understand that God actually looks out for you. He really looks out for you. Um, and uh, there's a whole thing of learning how to uh, appreciate what you already have or what God is already doing in your life. There's a place to, in a sense, count your blessings. Uh, see what God is doing. Even the whole thing of, uh, you know, that I'm healthy. You know, I, well, quite apart from maybe feeling sad, I don't have any other medical condition. I am healthy. I do have a job or I do have, you know, whatever it is that you're able to appreciate or to give thanks, the more that we do that, the more that the negativity or the criticism of ourselves decreases. And I'm sure that's one of the things that uh, Carol does when people come for counseling, uh, but it's also there in the Bible that God says he loves you and he has your back. He truly has your back. And so I want to end in prayer 
uh, I want to end in prayer, this session in prayer. Actually, today we're doing, it's a two-part series. So what we have just talked about is depression with Carol, that's part one. And in part two, which is going to, we're going to show next week, we're going to be talking about personality disorders. You know, what is that? That's a whole uh, different conversation. In fact, when Carol told me about it, I was like, oh my goodness, this we have to, it's a totally different conversation. We need to talk extensively about it. And that's what we're going to be talking about uh, next next week. Uh, so let me just pray for you so that we can conclude uh, today. Uh, so Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for the conversation that I have, uh, that we've been having with Carol. And I thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word truly affirms us. Your word tells us that we are special. Your word tells us that you have, you have our back. Your word tells us that you look out for us and that we do matter. I'm so thankful, Lord, that that is what you think about us. And I want to pray for anybody out there who may be feeling low about themselves. I'm praying, Father, that you'd, and that you'd encourage them with that word, that, they, that you love them and that they, that they, they are your beloved. Uh, but much more, I pray that they would reach out and that they would seek for help, whether it is through the WhatsApp community or through their friend or even through seeking counseling. I'm truly asking, Lord, that, um, you know, that uh, people would really respond to what we have been talking about today. So I thank you, Lord, for this conversation uh, and the fact that you never leave us and never forsake us. We bless you, O oh God, because you're our Father. For we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And so again, thank you, Carol, for just explaining to us so well what depression is and how it manifests in marriage. Uh, I look forward to seeing uh, you guys, and so does Carol, uh, next week as we talk about personality disorders. And so until next week, uh, God bless you uh, so much. Thanks. Mm -hmm.